Do you avoid camping because you can't stand sleeping outside or you're desperate for morning to come because you're terribly cold? Well, that doesn't have to be you anymore. I'm Eric Hansen, and this is How to Sleep Great While Camping. Now that I have your attention, please like and subscribe to our channel here at Backpacking TV so that we can bring you fresh, awesome tips all the time. So the first step to sleeping great when you are out camping is your tent site selection. Where you actually put yourself goes a long ways to making sure that you sleep great all through the night. So the things that I'm looking for are, is it flat? Are there rocks and gnarly things that are gonna be poking into me all night long? Are there other things that maybe are less obvious? Is there going to be water that could possibly run through if a storm pops up in the middle of the night that might run right underneath my tent? These are all things that are gonna factor into my tent site selection. But the first thing is, let's say the weather's good and I'm not worried about water and all some of these uh, kind of extraneous factors. I just wanna find a spot that's gonna help me sleep great. I'm looking for a tent site that has almost no slope at all but maybe like one to two degrees of slope, just a little bit of a slope that I like. To me, it actually helps helps me feel a little more comfortable. And then just in case it does rain, water is going to be shed away from me. And I don't have to worry about it. If a storm pops up in the night, I can just keep on sleeping like a baby. So I found a good spot here. There's not much on the ground. Yeah, there's a little bit of some rocks. There's a few things, but it's the wilderness. So it is what it is. Uh, and I'm going to you know, camp here tonight. Before I actually set up my tent, there is one other little side note I do want to say. So obviously some of the things are, are kind of obvious. Uh, is, there, is there a big slope? Are there big rocks that are going to be poking into your back all night? Yes, that definitely affects it, but that's also pretty intuitive. There is, however, one super secret. I'm going to let you in early on this video. This is on the early end of the video. This is like, this is like next level thinking. But I do factor in where the sunset, sunrise, and moon is going to be for sleeping great. So uh, this, if it's the winter time, I want to put my tent in a place that's going to catch that first light and actually warm up the tent. And then maybe I get an extra couple hours of sound sleep because that tent actually finally starts to warm up early in the morning. But also maybe it's midsummer and I do not want that tent to be getting super hot at four in the morning or five in the morning, which will definitely happen at first light. And so if that's the case, I'm gonna put my tent on the far side or the west side of a tree uh, in the summertime so that I can maximize my sleeping hours. And also if it's gonna be a full moon out, uh, maybe I don't like sleeping in a tent at all, then I'm gonna tuck my sleeping bag under, like say under a juniper tree so that that light isn't shining down on my face all night long. Okay, that's a next level tip for you all out there. These like blowing minds. All right, <laughs> I'm so excited. So now it's time to actually set up your tent, lay everything out, and we have got a few more things to talk about. Okay, so I've got my tent set up and I've got my sleeping bag and sleeping mattress laid out. The only other thing that I think is really important to note with your site selection is this actually does have a little bit of a slope here. It's just a couple of degrees, but if I point my head downhill, uh, that's going to lead to an uncomfortable night. It seems intuitive, but however, sometimes that's overlooked. So never have your head lower than your feet as that is a recipe for a disaster, or really just an uncomfortable night. So obviously, my feet are pointed downhill a little bit here. And then from within the tent, I just wanna make sure that everything is nice and clean. A, a clean tent is gonna to lead to a better night's sleep than a, than a dirty, dank, uh, wet tent or something like that. So, but let's just say all of those things are taken care of. You've got a nice clean tent. You're well situated, you're well oriented. There's still quite a few things that make a difference in having a good night of sleep. So if you watched our winter tip series with uh, how to sleep great while winter camping, a lot of these are gonna be crossover ideas because the, the principles are really the same. If you're warm and comfortable, you're gonna sleep great. If you're uncomfortable and cold, you're not gonna sleep great. So here's a few things to know about camping is I think the biggest mistake that most people make is that they do not buy a quality mattress. They buy something thin and cheap, just like a little bit of foam, and then they're close to the ground, they have very little insulation and very little padding beneath them. And that's gonna go a long way to making sure that you don't sleep well. So invest in your sleep by having 
most importantly, if you're gonna spend anywhere on that extra dollar, high dollar item, make it be your mattress. I have a mattress here from Sea to Summit. It's the Comfort Plus. This particular model is uh, has some insulation in it, which for the given summertime climate might be overkill. And yet at the same time, I it's usable all year round, uh, but it's really particularly nice in cold temperatures as well but you don't have to get an insulated mattress like this one, but it is quite nice. The main thing is just having this dual chamber mattress that uh, the cold air, so it's the desert, even in the desert, it gets cold out here. So it'll be close to around freezing tonight. So I want a dual chamber mattress and uh, all of the cold air that's gonna stay along the ground, that's gonna be trapped down below me and create a barrier. And then on this top chamber, that's the, that's the air that I warm up all night long and it actually makes me more efficient and I don't have to expend a lot of energy keeping that air that's just gonna constantly be cold all night long. So a dual chamber air mattress is amazing. When I was first backpacking, I slept on a uh, foam pad for like the first like six years as, as a uh, camper and I never slept well and I was always just like, praying for sunrise because I was cold and uncomfortable. And then as soon as I got one of these mattresses, it was like, oh, my mind has changed, my life has changed, I'm sleeping throughout the night, and now I love camping. And I think that's the main people's main complaint with, with camping is that they're just uncomfortable a lot. And uh, so if you're sleeping great, you're having a great time out here, a mattress goes a long way. Now, you wanna pair that with a good quality sleeping bag. So most sleeping bags are have a rating, a kind of like a three season rating or a temperature rating. A very common one is a 15 degree bag. And uh, that's gonna be good for your kind of broad spectrum camping. I totally recommend those bags. But if you're doing uh, shoulder season camping, maybe it's close to winter, uh, early spring like it is now actually, um, then you might want something that has a 10 degrees, five degree rating or something like that uh, to get you through the night. So a sleeping bag is gonna be important. Everybody loves a great sleeping bag and so people often spend good money there. And I totally am like, yes, invest in your sleep. That's the best thing you can do. But from within that, there's a couple more things. Some sleeping bags have, this one doesn't, but some sleeping bags have a integration system where the sleeping bag can connect to the mattress. And I actually really like that and do recommend it because then as you're rolling throughout the night, you're gonna stay put. The sleeping bag actually is connected to the mattress and it keeps you on your sleeping mat so you don't wake up halfway off the mat throughout the night. And I really like that. So if, you, if, that, if that is a concern for you, if you roll a lot, get one with an integrated attachment system and you will be happy for that. This bag is the Sea to Summit Ascent 2 bag and I really like this for a lot of reasons. One, it just has your classic mummy style, which I prefer, um, but then it also has multiple zippers. So when it's warm out, you can treat this kind of more like a blanket and uh, that is, it keeps me warm. I am a warm sleeper, so it, uh, that particular design is really nice for me and it allows me to kind of breathe and uh, ex expel that, some of that temperature as I want it. And then if I get cold, I can just zip everything up. So the main thing with sleeping well is you really just wanna be uh, an appropriately warm temperature all through the night. The first thing that gets cold for everybody is their feet. Now, what can you do to make sure that you don't get cold feet? And I'm not gonna be talking about relationship issues here. I'm gonna be talking about sleep quality. So a lot of times people's feet will slide off of the end of their sleeping mattress. And uh, so if your toes are on the ground and not actually have that separation with the air mattress or whatever mattress you have, that's gonna be the first thing that gets cold. And also your feet are the furthest away from your heart. It's the, your blood has to do the most work to get your feet warm. So it's the double whammy. And so a solid tip for everybody who's worried about cold feet or cold temperatures while they're sleeping is put a water bottle, like a Nalgene bottle, fill it with hot water, tuck that into the bottom end of your sleeping bag and that will really help you sleep great. But I like to be even more preventative than that. And I like to make sure that my, the foot box towards the end of my sleeping mattress, I'm gonna take extra things. Maybe it's a jacket, maybe it's some extra clothes and I'm gonna stuff that down at the end of my bag so that as I lay my sleeping bag out, 
I've got an extra six to maybe 10 inches of good space that if my feet hang off there, they're gonna be warm throughout the night because there's separation that I intentionally created down there. Another thing that tends to happen for people is they have too much space. Let's say you have a six foot sleeping bag and you're only a five, six foot person, uh, a five foot, six inch person. Uh, then you have a bunch of extra room in your foot box of your sleeping bag and putting jackets, putting things that fill that space down in the bottom of your bag, having your feet have to do less work to warm that area, you're going to be happier and you're going to sleep better throughout the night. I really like having a pillow. I think that that goes a long way, but also most people don't have pillows or it's kind of a luxury item. And so I will just take a t-shirt and then I'll take a down jacket and I'll stuff it inside make that a pillow and then I'll put that into my hood here and make a nice sleeping area for, for myself there. A common mistake that I think people make is they tend to bury their faces inside their sleeping bag and I talked about this in the winter video. You're breathing out a lot of moisture throughout the night and uh, more than we actually are, are really aware of. Uh, now the science may be debated as to how much moisture that actually is but it's enough to make a difference. If you have your head inside your sleeping bag all night, you're breathing out a lot of moisture and that makes your bag kind of damp and gross feeling uh, inside. So make sure that when you are cinching up your, the, your head, if you're worried about being cold, you still keep your mouth outside of your sleeping bag so that you're breathing all that moisture out into the tent and not into your bag. Again, I said this in the winter tip video, but I cannot stress this enough how important I think this tip is. Everybody is so worried about having to get up in the middle of the night to pee that they often will wake up at two in the morning desperate for a pee, but they don't want to get up because the sleeping bag is warm. And then they just sit there and toss and turn the rest of the night because they have to pee so bad. Well, do yourself a favor, please, for the love of everything that is holy, get up and go pee in the night when you feel like you have to. I cannot tell you the amount of relief that happens uh, and physically your body can just relax again. And when you crawl inside, that is when the most magical deep sleep happens in the whole night is after you've gotten up to go pee. Do yourself a favor, please get up and go pee in the night when you have to. If it's really cold and you're really worried about it, then some of you who are athletic enough can actually pee into a specific, like maybe a Gatorade bottle or something like that. If that's up to you, if that sounds like something that you're interested in, I've done it. It's a wonderful experience. It can be a little scary uh, as you don't want to make a mistake there. Uh, but some people that might be right for you. Uh, but everybody else, just, just go, just go get out of your tent and go pee. Come back in. You'll sleep great. Another thing that I think is important to talk about is what to wear when you actually go to sleep. Now, there's a debate out there. Some people say you'll sleep warmer if you're naked. Some people say you'll sleep warmer if you got clothes on. I personally do not actually really like to sleep naked. Uh, one, I don't think that actually helps you stay warmer, but two, I just feel more comfortable with a light base layer on my skin as opposed to my bare skin against this type of a fabric. I just think it's more comfortable. A lot of women especially, I think they like to wear yoga pants, and I definitely recommend that people do not wear constricting type of clothing things that are uh, skin tight, that actually cuts down your blood flow and makes it more likely that your feet are gonna be cold and uh, that you're actually gonna sleep less comfortably. So loose fitting, like base layer type clothing is key. I love that. And then if I need to get up in the night, I'm already kind of a little bit dressed and can scamper out for 20 minutes, not 20 minutes, it doesn't take me that long to go to the bathroom, but a little bit of time to just go pee and come back in and then I am quite comfortable. As I just talked about clothing, one more note on clothing. I think it's really important that you have a specific set of clothing that's just for sleeping. When you've spent all day backpacking, you got your underwear sweaty, you got your socks are all gross, your shirt is nasty and soaked in sweat, don't wear those same things to, to sleep in. Uh, one, it'll help keep your sleeping bag cleaner and nicer and more comfortable, but you will just feel so much better if you have a nice pair of fuzzy socks, fuzzy wool socks that are clean and not soaked and caked in sweat and dirt, underwear that's clean and fresh, and a shirt that's clean and fresh as well. So make sure that you're going to sleep with clean clothes that will go a long way to make sure that you are sleeping great throughout the night. Okay, that's kind of the main things is stay warm, stay dry, 
and uh, have nice soft stuff underneath you so that you sleep great throughout the night. If you think I missed something, please comment and uh, give me your best tips on how you sleep great in the wilderness. But this has uh, made a big difference for me. I've gone from sleeping in fits and maybe only half an hour at a time and just getting crappy, crappy sleep while camping to just loving it where I can sleep eight, nine, ten hours throughout the night and that will just revolutionize your camping and backpacking experience. So I hope you like this video. Hope you find some good tips here so that you sleep great throughout the night. Like and subscribe and stay tuned for more. We have more great tips coming your way. I'm Eric Hansen. This is Backpacking TV. Thanks so much for watching.